Good morning. Good morning. Wow, look at all of you. I think I see more people than I had on my little list, but I don't think it was updated. It is so great to be here together in worship at last, um, not diminishing the online community. And welcome also because I, I am broadcasting on Facebook Live, but also Steve is recording the service. So we'll have a prettier version of this service available later in the day. So we're worshiping in three ways this morning with possibly two communities present at this moment. So welcome, welcome all. Um, let's go over the rules. Now, first of all, um, I'm going to unmask because I believe that you prefer that. And we have all windows open, including this here. And Susie and I are sufficiently distanced and vaccinated, by the way. So, um, but we do ask you to be very, very observant of the protocols of worship. And that includes when you leave the building and you go out into the parking lot, because, because we are here based on the fact that we can do what we know we need to do to keep not only ourselves safe, but our whole community safe. So we need to remember, even if you're vaccinated or I'm vaccinated, not everybody is. We have to remember that even for those of us who are vaccinated, there are breakthrough infections. And so this mask and the distance that we keep and the hand sanitizer we remember to use those things are still protecting us and others, and we certainly don't want anyone to get sick as a result of our worshiping together. And the only way that we know that we can keep on doing this is if we do it thoughtfully and correctly. So I'm asking you please, even though you are so tempted, and we are also tempted to come up to each other and get closer and take off our masks and hug each other, please, don't do that. And if you really are tempted and you're getting kind of off campus, and you ask the other person before you approach them. So that way, it is my hope and prayer that we can continue worshiping together. And this will just be the first of many times again in our beautiful sanctuary. Um, there are so many people I should be thanking because we've had such a great worship team um, but I'm going to leave that because I'd leave somebody else. I'd, I'd leave somebody out. Um, we do ask that you leave your bulletin in the pew so that we know where you have sat and can clean in that area. So your bulletin marks your spot. I want to honor um, Kathy Tompkins. Marina informs me that Kathy Tompkins, who donated this piano, died uh, this week. Um, so we honor the memory of Kathy, who has helped us with our music. You have in um, your announcements a list of upcoming services. Um, I'm not 100% sure, maybe um, Karen June can help with this. Um, Wednesday, May 5th, I'm actually on vacation that week, so I'm not sure if we have coverage yet for the Wednesday evening service, not this week, but the next week. Um, you'll note that May 2nd is finally the day that I'm going to be installed officially as your pastor. So it's, it's only been a year and some, and it's only been a pandemic. Uh, apparently we didn't leave each other yet. <laughs> But we're still going to make it official. And so we're going to have, it's going to be our regular Sunday worship service, but we're going to be back outside in the parking lot so that we can accommodate the, the crowds, right? Um, we're going to accommodate the crowds on Sunday. And we will have refreshments, but they will be refreshments to go. There will be cupcake hospitality. Um, and you can see, you know, that the list of services. May 23rd is Confirmation and Pentecost, and we will again be outdoors to accommodate our youth and their families. So, um, no Sunday school next week. 
um, so that everyone can attend installation. And the last Sunday school and confirmation classes are, oh, April 25th, which is today. So I guess it's the end of classes. Well, congratulations. Um, congratulations, children and youth. You've, you've completed your year, but don't leave us yet. Um, please come to my installation. You may have gotten um, in your email and you'll see something in the newsletter about the nursery school. So I, I just want to let you know that we, we do have a program that's running right now, but we have decided to take 21-22, the academic year, as a hiatus so that we can reevaluate our program and also really all the ways in which our church is being called into mission so that we know that if we continue nursery school, we will be 100% behind it together and build the best new program that we can. So I see Dee Granville, one of our founding members here. Um, it's been such a time-honored tradition, but COVID hit us hard. We were also in a rehiring situation and, and we've worked mightily hard on the board but th this is how we have discerned, and this is how the council has discerned on behalf of the congregation. So, but we really, we welcome your thoughts, your responses, and your sharing on the nursery school. So please contact me or contact the office and, and tell us. Um, and I hope that in cottage meetings, we'll be able to tell our stories. Cottage meetings, that's what we were gonna do when I first arrived. Um, April 29th is Lutheran Campus Ministry Fundraiser, um, and that is via Zoom, giving online, et cetera, et cetera. But today you had an opportunity to leave a paper offering if that's how you make your offering. We, we're going to uh, do a few things differently in the worship service, but mainly we're going to have the hymn after the sermon, which is not what the bulletin says. Um, that's the way we've usually done it. So we'll have the hymn and the prayers following the message. And we have a children's message today, but I'll ask that when you come up, you distance yourselves, um, and I'll probably ask you to use hand sanitizer because I have something I want you to look at. So I think, I think that's it for our announcements. Did I miss anything, Susie? <laughs> we'll find out later. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And our hymn is number 764, Have No Fear, Little Flock. Again, um, no singing, but you may hum behind your mask. And we hope that we will get you a soloist at some points. Uh, but right now, we're not sufficiently distant to be able to sing freely.
refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. And together, let us pray the prayer of the day. O oh Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I feel like I need a riser. <clears throat> the first reading today comes from the book of Acts, the fourth chapter. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick, and are asked how this man has been healed. Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Be we will read responsibly Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be one. The Lord is my shepherd, and he is the You restore my soul, O Lord and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Lord, the of death, I no evil, for you are with me, your me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. The second reading today comes from 1 John, the third chapter. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, 
If our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from Him whatever we ask, because we obey His commandments and do what pleases Him. And this is His commandment, that we should believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as He has commanded us. All who obey His commandments abide in Him, and He abides in them. And by this we know that He abides in us, by the Spirit that He has given us. The Word of the Lord. The Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter, beginning of the 11th verse. I invite you to rise, those who are here, if you would like. And these are the words of Jesus to his people and the crowd that surrounds him. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. <clears throat> Excuse me. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And I invite the children to come forward now. Who do we have? Alexis. And who else do we have? Brett. And Bentley. This is great. This is more than I thought I'd get. So I'm going to share this with you. Yeah. Children and youth. Who's going to rescue 
Jersey dog. That's great. So I bet, uh, well, let's just think of it this way. Did your dog, um, do you make your dog happy because you took your dog in and rescued your dog? And did your dog make you happy? Yeah, yeah. So the real reason that these animals were rescued by the people at Purpose Farm, even more than, than to rescue just the animals, there's also, they wanted to rescue the children who get to play with them and take care of them. Because some of those children were having a hard time also, just like the animals. Maybe they didn't live in a happy place. Maybe they got hurt, or maybe they got their feelings hurt. And taking care of animals really, really helps them. So today, in our Bible readings, we heard about when we said that the Lord is our shepherd. So a shepherd takes care of who? Sheep, right? So God's our shepherd. But we also heard that we're supposed to take care of each other. So in our life, really, the sheep need the shepherd, right? But sometimes the shepherds need the other sheep. So we're both. We're called to take care of each other. And that we all need each other. And God tells us that we all need to honor one another. Animals and all the creatures and the earth. So on Wednesday it was Earth Day. But excuse me, I now have something in my throat. <laughs> I swear it's not COVID. Um, so I did. Yeah, so I wanted to honor that we all need each other, the earth and its creatures. Yeah. So do you want to say a quick prayer with me? God our Father and our mother. We thank you for all the beautiful things on the earth and the creatures you have made. And we are among them, your children. We ask that you would help us to heal the creatures that, that need us, that need to be rescued. And also, that through, through them, you would heal us. We thank you for your beautiful creation. Amen. Thank you. Good to see you. Please pray with me a moment. of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. My second place of ministry was a struggling former mill town in Connecticut. Most of my church families there were middle class, but I used to get regular calls from community members. Someone would need a ride to the doctor. Someone would ask for $50 worth of groceries. Someone would be short on the rent. And the calls always seemed to come in on Thursday night or Friday. Friday was my Sabbath day, and I tried as hard as I could to take it off. So in those days, I coined the term, somebody else's emergency. I would try to remember that other people's emergencies didn't always need to become mine. And I would remind myself that the people who knew where to find me also knew where to find the congregational pastor and the Baptist pastor who took his day off on Monday. Healthy boundaries are important. Self-care is important. Sabbath rest is important. We should learn how to say the word no, or the phrase not now. And when we're faced with someone else's need, somebody else's emergency, it's wise to ask ourselves the question, is this really mine to do? 
But is there a time when somebody else's emergency should become our own? Is there a time when our healthy boundaries aren't healthy at all, but instead represent a failure of imagination, or in reality, a failure of compassion? We have so many examples before us. Is racial injustice somebody else's emergency, if you're white? Is economic injustice somebody else's emergency, if you're middle class or well-to-do? Is COVID-19 somebody else's emergency if you're not sick? Is climate change somebody else's emergency if there's no disaster in your own backyard? Today I'm going to share with you an emergency of my own. This is so deeply personal to me that I've often held back from communicating about it or preaching on it. I fear that I'm too emotional to present this issue rationally. And I also wonder whether others might mock the cry of my heart. You ever feel that way? Like if something's really important, sometimes you just don't want to share it. But it's really not only my emergency, it's all of ours. It's climate change. Wednesday was Earth Day. My heart condemns me because I realize that I say less about conservation and wildlife and environmentalism for the simple fact that they are so personal to me. Growing up in New England, I loved our famous autumn with its glorious colors, the bite in the air, the frost on the grass, always there by October. I thought that fall was something I could count on every year, unless I moved to California, like my unfortunate grandparents. San Diego, what's that? But in my first place of ministry, just an hour or so from my hometown, they promised me that I would love their fall foliage. And that year, the leaves just stayed green. I haven't seen an October frost for years. By the time we get frost, winter is already here. My parents were citified people, but I loved the land, always. I loved the conservation land near our house. I loved the scrubby beaches of Cape Cod, where we rented a cottage for a week or two, certain summers. I loved especially the long weekends we vacationed at an old farm in the Berkshires. Land was everything. My grandparents were immigrants, and, and land has always represented roots to me, the stability I never had. But land is also more than roots. It has also been my healing. I was about 12 or 13 when we started going to that farm in the Berkshires. I had just started junior high school, and I had no friends. Worse, I was ostracized. I tried so hard to belong, but I could never figure out how to be or, or who to be. On the farm, I didn't need to try. Milking time for the dozen, two dozen, 4-H cows was 4.15 a.m. And winter or summer, my younger brother and I would set our alarms and cross the road in the dark as soon as lights came on at the barn. We helped the farm lady's son, mostly, mostly by running the pooper scooper. Yeah, but we loved it. And we packed the cows. And he would tease my brother by asking him about his girlfriend. He didn't have one yet, pretended he did. But dear, we were accepted. The animals took us as we were, and the farm family did too. We took long walks in our own family and got reconnected, and we ate. Boy, did we eat that good farm cooking. Yes, for me, the land represents personal healing, 
And you might have a story like that yourself, of a place or people or animals that have helped to heal you. It represents healing to me personally. But it's also a lot more than that. This week, Earth Day, you know, PBS ran, ran a documentary on the young Swedish climate activist, Greta Thunberg. You might have heard of her. She was only 15 when she inspired a school strike to protest climate change. You know, before COVID, the school strike actually meant something, right? She has traveled all over Europe to learn about the issue and to speak in various forums. And she won't get on an airplane because of all the fuel they use, so. Um, and she's called adults and all those in power to live up to their words and the science about climate change by taking real action. Greta and her youth activist colleagues spoke of their fear of the future, how their bellies tighten when they think, for example, of their own children. What kind of life will they have? Is the future of our children and grandchildren, today's youth, and some of you are here today, is that somebody else's emergency? Climate change isn't just a heart-wrenching loss of my autumn leaves and the frost on the October grass. It's the destruction of alpine villages by increasing rock slides. It's the forest fires in the West and the mudslides in California. It's the death of so many innocent creatures. And there's so much more, more than you could say. It may indeed be the loss of the future. The writer of First John tells us, we heard Susie share, we know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help, goods or power? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And here, clearly, the writer is saying little children, not meaning literally children, but speaking lovingly, right? Giving a loving epithet to adults who too often behave like children and don't live up to God's call. And it's not works righteousness. It's the simple fact that God is known by love and action. It is through our faithfulness and action in real terms that we reveal God in Christ. And Greta Thunberg tells us that the world is waiting. The next generation is waiting for the older generation to act with them and on their behalf. The gospel calls us to be shepherds of one another. So should we be concerned about the wolf snapping up our brothers and sisters throughout the world or waiting for our children at the gate? And it seems obvious that we would at least shepherd our own young. But youth like Greta have called the grown-ups of the world to account for their inaction. World leaders as well as the rank and file, people like the adults in this congregation, are young people have learned that they must shepherd themselves. Greta is a tiny person, small and slight, and concealed beneath loose-fitting shirt sleeves. She has Asperger's. She is shy, and she says that as a child, she was easily overwhelmed, not only by crowds, but even by the, by the children in her own classroom, so that they actually sent her to a special school where she'd only have five or six others in the classroom with her. Yet, demonstrations, she says, are what I do. Demonstrations. Day by day, Greta gives up her life in the fight for life. Her faith overcomes her fear. But what brings tears to her eyes is the idea that for the sake of their own profit, and ease in the present, 
powerful adults in the world are content to sacrifice her generation's future. Such people lack compassion, she says. It's this lack of compassion that is almost too much for her. And she can't even get the words out. She can't finish her sentence very easily because she keeps on choking up and speaking of those who lack compassion. Yes, for Greta, it's personal too. Greta is fighting the good fight. But as for me, despite everything I have said, my inaction condemns me. Because my emotions have made me silent even when I should speak. And my actions have also condemned me. For example, I have consumed far too much takeout this past year. The containers I alone have piled into trash bags and recycling bins. While the world needs so much more now than for me simply to minimize my personal plastic consumption. But you know what? It would be a start. Any change in my habits is a start. Maybe one day, I will have the courage and discipline of the Swedish teenager who has called me to account. I wonder sometimes, do I do so little because I fear that, that I won't be able to make any difference? That it will just be too late? I wonder if the God-given power within me is being snatched up by the wolf of despair. Maybe despair is the wolf at my gate. Sometimes we act so much like sheep, going where we don't belong. Sheep are not famous for their smarts. You might have heard that. Going where we don't belong, following along blindly, even over the edge of a cliff. But God in Christ is our shepherd. And God still calls us to be shepherds of one another. The God who calls us and cares for us and knows us is also the God of healing. In a world of hurt, there is still potential for healing. Like me, Greta Thunberg receives her healing by spending time with animals. When at home in Sweden, she goes regularly to care for the horses at a nearby stable, like the kids who go to Purpose Farm. She explains that as someone with Asperger's, shy of too much contact with people, she thrives on her interaction with the horses. We need the land and its creatures, and they also need us. Lord, be my shepherd and make me a shepherd. Amen. <laughs> the king of love my shepherd is.
alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Steadfast God, you call all people to turn to you and believe. We give you thanks for the diligent leadership and faithful service of those who lead our church and our congregation. We pray for Bishops Elizabeth and John, the leaders of the churches in Zimbabwe and Zambia, our missionary Karen Anderson, and Pastor Susan for leading us in worship today. Bless and strengthen our church leaders, church council members, staff, worship leaders, and all who offer their gifts to this community, that our work together would serve your mission. Hear us, O oh God. Generous and abundant God, you have created an earth filled with beautiful and life-sustaining waters, mountains, and lands. Help us to care for, honor, and restore your creations so that they will remain in all their glory for the generations and our future. Continue to bless all those who fight to protect our earth, especially warriors like Greta, who are so brave in their fight against larger foes and never back down. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, Gracious Lord, your love flows through each of us as we reach out to those around us. Your love encourages us to love others as we love ourselves. And this week our country took a first step towards justice for our black brothers and sisters. Continue to strengthen our resolve to stand up to hate, to stand up for our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, and to stand up for the equal right to justice for all. Help us to love one another in truth and action. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, the nations and people around this world are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders the passion to serve, the desire to shape policy and develop communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace, and the joy in using their power to uplift the lowly. Hear us, O oh God. We give thanks, Lord, for the covenant you made with your people. When we allow you to guide us, contentment in our lives follows. Only you know the green pastures and quiet waters that will restore us. Help us to open our hearts to you and to obediently follow you because your guidance and protection in this life bring us to life in your kingdom forever. Hear us, O oh God. God, you are a comfort to so many. You transform sickness into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consolation and suffering into peace. Awaken hope in all who hear the good news of Jesus Christ, especially those who are hungry, anxious, oppressed, despairing, and sick. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ dealing with COVID-19, whether sick, healing, or helping those afflicted with the virus. We pray for the members of our church family, our friends, and those in need of a caring shoulder to lean on and draw strength from, especially Gary, Sammy, Jody, Debbie, Lori, Brad, Dan, Mark, Hazel, Chase, Matthew, Ted, <coughs> Alex, Judy, Ray, Al, Nikki, Tracy, Jackson, Layla, Dick, and Ginny. And for all those you may now may name aloud on your lips or silently in your hearts. Give all who provide care and measure of your compassion and peace. Hear us, O oh God. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us say together the prayer of offering. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms full of blood. Nourish us anew in your tender care, and empower us in faithful service. Contend to others with this same love, through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. And let us begin. 
prepare ourselves now for the great Thanksgiving. You should have received when you came in a packet containing communion elements if you are here in person with us today. And if not, um, if you are at home, you may have an altar table that you have prepared. So please get ready, and for those who have a plastic baggie, you might want to undo it now and be ready. And for people who are worshiping with us at another time, we ask that you would honor that we are together in spirit and in community. We will also, or I will also, share with you the prayer of spiritual communion and the gifts of God for those who do not receive today.
more faithful people everywhere. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. <clears throat> Satisfy the hunger still around us, and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Hear now this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And before our dismissal, let us sing our hymn, number 789, verses 1, 2, and 2 through 4. Savior like a shepherd, lead us. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.